tutakuwa na pesa ya kuendesha serikali ya Kenya hatutakuwa na haja ya kwenda kukopa madeni kutoka China na mahali ingine tutakuwa na pesa kila mtu akifanya biashara na kila mtu akiwa na kazi Ladies and gentlemen welcome back to our channel There is something about this administration that perturbs me I have listened to our president and I'm trying to compare his speeches just prior to the last election and now and there is a complete paradigm shift from what he be he believed in then and what he is perpetuating now and I was just wondering is the president lying to us because we are gullible we have allowed him to lie to us or is he lying because he's an expert of the same or both i have received a report that uh, in fact this report was released by the chairman of the kenya kwanza economic council david ndia man who has decided to tweet from morning to evening and this report says that uh, imf has increased kenyan loan limit by 98 billion kenyan shillings we are not talking about millions here we are talking about billions and it reads briefly that uh, kenya's liquidity crunch has been boosted by the international monetary funds imf decision to increase its lending program by 98 million shillings this was announced on tuesday by president william ruto's chief economic advisor according to reuters that is the situation and when you look at this report and what william ruto said about the loans that were being taken by the huruto administration a government that he was part and parcel because he was taking salary and uh, other allowances and privileges as the deputy president and he accused that government of overborrowing promising that when he gets to power he will ensure that they will not borrow again tutapanga ajira ya vijana ama vyeo ya viongozi tutakopa teni ama kwanza tutafuta pesa ya kuzalisha chakula tuondoe njaa sijameni tuondoe njaa kwanza wale majamaa wa kuzimia ati wanataka kuendelea ati kukopa pesa ati wanataka kuendelea na capital intensive projects ambayo inafaidi watu wachache tunataka tuwaambie hii serikali ya mahasla tutabadilisha hiyo maneno tutawachana na kukopa pesa tutatafuta investment tutawachana na capital intensive programs tutatafuta labor intensive program kwa hivyo yeye akiingia madeni itapanda bei ya mafuta itapanda bei ya unga itapanda bei ya school fees itapanda bei ya healthcare itapanda yeye anasema lazima aendelee vile rais anayestaafu anafanya it just didn't end there even after taking oath of office when he ascended to power he held a meeting with parliamentarians and other leaders and he promised them that he was cutting down on unnecessary expenses and he said he was not going to be the president that will take Kenya into debt crisis we will have to uh, postpone uh, some of them um, we will have to relook at some of the interventions i have seen uh, reports that we have slowed down on um trips abroad and many of the other things and and make sure that we are removing the fat from our budget i promise you because i will not be the president that will continue the journey of taking our country into debt it's going and i remember even his deputy rigadi gashagwa 
explained to Kenyans that when you realize that you're in a hole, the best thing to do is to stop digging. By being in a hole is simply meant that as the Kenya Kwanzaa regime, they realized that they had in inherited a government that uh, had borrowed so much. And he promised Kenyans that they would stop borrowing. And they were, they were, they were trying to camp on the fact that they will increase revenue collection. And they will cut on unnecessary expenditure like traveling so that they consolidate that money to help the hustlers who they had promised to take care of. Now, that is something that they have trapped on. It is something of the past. They no longer care. And that is why I was asking, are we being deceived because we want to? Now that this money has been increased, it has been increased because IMF usually comes and review whether certain conditions have been met. And one of the conditions that IMF had given to Kenya was to ensure that they do away with the subsidies on electricity, subsidies on fuel. That has been met. The other condition was to ensure that they increase taxes on fuel and electricity and all that. And you all know, because that is the talk of the day, where Kenyans keep on buying petroleum products at very exorbitant prices, yet in our neighboring countries, the prices are going down. So they have met all these, all these conditions, and that's why the IMF reviewed their borrowing status and they have been the, 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 the borrowing has been increased it was good it was bad when Uhuru was taking loans but now that they are in the power it is good and I was wondering I thought what is good for the goose is good for the gander no, they care about the fact that David D once revealed to the nation that the government is very wasteful they keep on wasting hard-earned taxpayers' money. The cost of living is just too high. And we are told by the man who is at the center of uh, all these things that the government is very wasteful. So we are going to take more loans and it is going to end up in unnecessary expenditure. It is going to end up in people's pockets because we all know that this government is also full of corruption. They are not committed and there is no political goodwill to fight corruption. So this money is going to end up in people's pockets. And that is the situation where we are. Come 2027, we are still going to give audience to more fallacy. Because the government knows very well what is good for the ears. And they will come back with another set of lies promising what they will do to us. And I thought this is the time that we should wake up because we have learned just enough. Let me try another Kiswili today. Yesterday I was corrected. My Kiswili teacher taught me that anaye umwa o maalie umwa na nyoka akiona ungongo hushtuka was beaten to a shy. Let me just put it that way. We have been deceived, but isn't it time that we should learn from our, from our mistakes? Because we can't have a government that will tell us everything that we need to hear during the campaigns. Then immediately after they ascend to power, then they make, you know, a complete pattern shift and they don't care about the status of living because people are really suffering. You know, when I talk of suffering, um, it really pains me because when we talk to people out there, there are people who have lost jobs. The cost of production is just too high. Companies are folding and they are running away from the Kenyan market because of full products and all the taxes. And people are just wondering, where do we go? Some are living in despondent situations. They have given up. They don't know what to do. David D is not making things easier or any better because he's saying that his job is not to give hope. He's giving the reality. I don't know whether to blame him 
or to you know accept what he calls reality but do you think that there is no way out of this if you ask me this government is not just serious i've always stated that we cannot continue languishing on blame game because we cannot build a nation or progress as a nation if we keep looking back the only time that we need to look back is to do that in retrospect and try to learn from it but we cannot look back in a continued state of blame game it will not help us and i want to you know say that it's i i want to thank raila muludinga uhuru kenyatta for taking a low profile for taking a passive state in politics because the government was really thriving on lamentation crime fall and blame game now that they are quiet you know they have thrown this government into a quagmire because the government has you know the the, the opposition has decided run your country you said that we should give you time to stabilize this economy and you see what is happening and so ladies and gentlemen let us be a nation that learns let us be a nation that when given a golden opportunity to elect our good leaders we should do so without any feelings we should do so without any emotions because election comes and go but once you elect a leader and you play around with your you know political affiliation and tribal affiliation you've got another 5 years of suffering and it is very sad that we even still defend this government instead of putting pressure so that they can improve because what when akufa nanja you know everyone feels the pangs of hunger the pain of insecurity the the burden of the high cost of living and it does it it does not really do that on the basis of your tribe on the basis of whom you voted for and that's why every time i talk about the economy and the state of, our, of, of the economic situation in kenya i do that with a very painful heart because we don't listen we have been blindfolded 